Diet Coke has been my uh, my saving grace throughout this uh, perilous journey of getting the switcher to work. This Perrier will be my, um, it'll be the Virgil to my Dante. It's going to guide me through hell oh, nice. of what we're going to talk about. Um. Well, listen, I wanted to do, actually, that's not true. I didn't want to do more Israel-Palestine. People wanted me to do more Israel-Palestine. Uh, listen, I'll give like an update, I guess, but it's like uh it's something that never ends. It's something that never ends. It's also like, bro, um, how, what else is there to say other than there's like a humanitarian disaster unfolding before our very eyes? 8,000 Gazans are dead. That's the most updated number. Um, still the same number on the Israeli side, 1,400. This is as of Monday, October 30th at 11 p.m. 11.11. Oh, make a wish, John fucking hate that time i know what selfless wish i'm gonna make if in fact this, in the middle this, east this woo-woo shit is true well i can't tell you there is won't come true okay. well it won't come true regardless oh. <laughs> um but yeah it's pretty it's pretty fucking catastrophic um most of those eight thousand are women and children not that we're it's a lot of fucking people yeah, I'm That's not. I'm not saying that the men people. don't matter. I'm just saying that to well, matter highlight most, the fact the, that 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 it's not um, military lives, Hamas lives necessarily. I'm sure there's, I don't know, a handful of Hamas terrorists within that group that that were killed, but um, the vast majority were were kids and and I saw women. This insane video of the, an IDF tank just fucking blowing away a car on the street, oh, just yeah. like a tank shell just. Which is like crazy to see. But the guys took the video of it from like a hundred yards away. Just this car's backing up and trying to drive down the street, and then just and, then, and uh. But I learned a little little something something today. What? What's that? It's all these terror groups. Yeah, they're connected. Who would have thunk? Mm, well, right? you know. who would have thought? And who would have thought that you know uh uh this much uh inf infrastructural damage in the middle east would have done this to all these terror groups yeah and uh i found out today that we're giving 40 million dollars a week to the taliban <laughs> in afghanistan and they're setting up unofficial ambassador uh, like al-qaeda in each uh, state in afghanistan that that money's getting funded to terror networks that are then being used to fund these things that are fighting mm. it's just ridiculous what a mess huh so much money what a mess. I want $40 million a week. I would love $40 million. Um, I'll never have it. Uh, oh, not, you I mean, will. it's not it's not too late for me to sell myself to some billionaire somewhere. Um, you keep threatening this. You don't have the gumption. You would get so bored so fucking quickly. With all that money? Yeah, you would be like I a can, Joan That I can ignore Didion my novel. husband with? Yeah, you would just become suicidal. You'd start doing psychedelics. At least it'd be fun. Dude. No, it wouldn't. You'd have a horrible time. No, you'd I be a drug it. addict. I would you'd just, be a drug addict in a just, month. I would just cheat on him. <laughs> yeah, you'd be a drug addict in a month. You, you know, um, I would literally just ignore him, manipulate yeah, him, the, and leave him. Do the who was the lady who was the ex? And I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel bad about it because he'd have a million dollar or billion dollars in this situation. So I'd be like, whatever, get yourself another. Well, you just got to make sure not to go uh, with Saudis. Right, dude, they'll fucking, I know, Yeah, I know, you're not going to be able to do that to that. I know, I want to keep my head on yeah, my shoulders here. you need a nice here, old white guy, literally. and those guys are disappearing. There's not that many of them I left. I know, I know. You can't do an Anna Nicole anymore. You need a good old wasp. Yeah, you need you a guy know, who's that, just like, oh, and you could just be like, the sex was great last night, Jimmy. Like, mm -hmm. and I need to be the Marcia anything. to Logan Roy, you know, you don't know this reference, but in no. succession. Um, yeah, it's really fucked up. I don't know what really else to do. Did, what to do? Somebody got mad at me for having the Gaza children fundraiser on my Instagram. And I was like, I, I mean, I, I, it literally on my Instagram, you can promote like a charity. I don't know if it does yeah. anything, but I imagine it does because, you know, you put that at the, it's, it's like in your bio on Instagram. Yeah. I'm not sitting there harassing people on, all the, on my story, although I should be. And I, and I am occasionally. Uh, but I, but I have that on there front and center on display. And so somebody messaged me. Fix the TV. Sorry. What this do you mean? so distracting. It's all the things, the thing with bibs. The what? The thingamabibs. It's all the different screens. It, well, let's put it on one big screen. I don't know how. I don't. Uh, don't sorry. fuck with it. Don't fuck with it. I mean, do you need to see yourself that bad? I need to see things that you pull up on the TV. All oh, right. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say, John? You can do it. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, you know yes. what? You're right. I didn't put the settings on. 
Give me a second. Anyways, guys. Um, and Sorry, I, I repeat no, that. No, that's it's fine. Um, so I was just basically saying that I had one of those fundraisers up on the. There we go. There we go. A hey, good, good call. Yeah. Whoa, magic. Why are we so far? Let's scoot over. I fucked up, guys. Guys, it's been a very incompetent. If I scoot day over anymore, me. my big head blocks Ida hour. Um. <sighs> Fine. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, yeah, somebody got mad at me for having the Gaza thing. And I was like, it literally says, let me just tell you exactly what it says on this fundraiser on my Instagram. That people got upset at me for. I mean, the audacity, the gall to, to literally give somebody shit for having a fucking charity on their page. For it children. Says, for children, literally. For children. Yeah, it's not like I'm, like, raising money for, you know, Lyme's disease awareness or some shit, mm -hmm. okay? It's like. It says supporting urgent relief for Gaza's children. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Sue me. Were there children that need help? Ida will be there. Imagine getting upset for someone for having something yeah. in support of literally kids not dying. What they say? They just said, "Oh, it's clear. Uh, you, you know, you put your you put your uh, you put your affiliations and your anti-Semitism front and center on display Oof. on your on your profile." And I Oof. didn't even respond, but I just looked at the message preview. I was like, Oof. "You know what? This is why I don't check my requests sometimes because I'm like, this is just." It's really children, they have a lot of help, you know? They got, mm -hmm. like, they got a lot of, like, you know, yeah, they have, like, I a mean, government. Yeah, they have incredibly wealthy <laughs> they have, people like, they have, like, advocating water. for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God forbid you say something about the, the, the yeah. population that had nothing to do with this terrorist attack that are being slaughtered and killed um, yeah. in the, you know, in the name of, uh, you know, eradicating anti-Semitism. Okay. I mean, children and grinding, grinding poverty is a very, very sad thing. And when you mix warfare in with it, it's probably the most tragic thing on earth. And they have uh, essentially zero future. Uh, they have no very line little, of defense. Let's not like let's beyond bullets and shrapnel. They right. have. Uh, they oftentimes come out incredibly traumatized with low IQs and uh, their water they're drinking PTSD. is disgusting. It's... And they don't live long. So no, uh, yeah, you know. So um, you're already taking fuck, a, a fuck pretty me short and tragic existence mm. and you're just uh you know you're making it all the more tragic and babies are beautiful we love babies we yes. are a pro baby oh, podcast we're super pro baby we love cute babies no antinatalism here guys no those, those guys are annoying have you seen the reddit antinatalism you know God, i don't want to give annoying. a shit if you don't want to have a kid don't have a kid yeah, exactly. we're gonna don't be robots like fucking, soon yeah. i don't care you know have a robot I mean? baby I, this whole thing about like yes, uh, we need to get our population numbers up. It's like yeah, I agree, Elon. Okay, but here's the here's the thing you're not telling everyone. What you actually you are telling everybody. But like, why is this not part of the conversation? It's like we are literally gonna be robots soon. Who cares? Yeah, like, we'll just have robot babies. I It'll get be it. like a Furby. I get it. If you want to like raise the GDP of this country, and in doing so, um, you know, you have to fucking ha pop out some some new spawn. I get that, and mm. God knows you're gonna repopulate the planet. You and Nick Cannon together through your fucking yeah. uh you know designer babies that you're maybe not with the canon but with you you're doing like gattaca 2.0 over here he's getting like the ceo of the boring company of this robot company or maybe mm -hmm. i'm sorry of Neuralink of one of them and he had twins with them and then there was some beef with grimes Wait, yeah i know How's, wait, what's Nick Cannon doing? Oh, no, that's Elon. That's Elon's son. That's what's Elon. Nick Cannon doing? Oh, he's just having a thousand kids. Oh, uh, doesn't his heart look like Swiss cheese or something? Like, Nick Cannon? Yeah, does he have like holes in his heart? Does he for real? Yeah, I think he's like, how's he having so many kids? I don't know. He's had so many that that, that there's a mortality rate of his kids. That's crazy. One of you them, know, he must be having... Away, but. If you have kids in Texas, if you have like a bunch of kids, uh, I think the cap on like child support is like $1,700 a month. Really? The, the courts can't more, make you pay more than that. So, uh, but yeah, not if you're baller. rich. If you're rich like that, no. That's even if you're rich. I think the cap's like seventeen. What? I was talking to a divorce lawyer that from Why Texas are you earlier. Talking to a divorce lawyer. There was a bar. Person at my bar. She was dude, the, the epitome of. She had the like the like fifty five year old woman. Just like humongous, like bleach blonde hair, like insane lipstick, drinking Ooh, red wine, just being course. like the cap seventeen hundred dollars. I once saw the most famous divorce attorney at this restaurant in Malibu, uh, Laura Wasser, having like yeah. the most just just beautiful Sunday brunch with her whole big pretty family, and just, she just yeah. looks so you know stress free. And meanwhile, you know she's litigating like Brad Pitt's divorce. Her so. husband looks like he's diffusing a bomb. He's just sweating. <laughs> I wonder if she is married. Um, oh, I hope well, what not. What I like about her is she's really like honest about her job and in interviews. She'll just be like, listen, my father was a prominent divorce attorney as well. We all know how marriage works. Okay. It doesn't. 
Like, and I'm just kind of like, all right. She almost, without, she said everything except I don't believe in marriage. And I think she is married. What is that? This is your old Diet Coke, by the oh, way. Oh, I thought that was your Diet Coke. It no, bothered no. me that it was in front of me. <laughs> oh, I keep I keep stacking DCs in here. Uh, it would be so sick to represent yourself in divorce court like Ted Bundy and kick ass at it. Um, yeah, actually, that would kick ass. That's yeah. a, like a, that's a reason of itself to get married. Um, just so you can have like a cool like trial but <laughs> when you I know when like, it inevitably ends. That'd be a really like imagine like I know she's probably got enemies in the divorce lawyer world. So like if I was her husband, I'd mm-hmm. be like, who's the dude she hates the most? And I'd approach him and be like, get her. Oh, guess guess who it is? Who? Laura Wasser. Uh, uh, Laura Dern's character in Marriage Story is based on Laura Wasser. That movie. I love. I don't like it. I but, love that fucking. But movie. nonetheless, uh, Laura Wasser. Is that Noah Baumbach? That's Noah Baumbach. Yeah, I've been advised to like. watch a few of his other movies by my friend Jack, who actually yeah. listens. I'd find Ray Liotta from from Marriage Story and make him go against. Um, is he in that? He plays the lawyer that Adam Driver gets after his first lawyer is a. Piece oh, I of forgot shit. about that. Yeah, Ray, Ray, Ray like, Liotta. Ray Liotta is like she's not going to be nice to you. Oh God! I mean, what a movie! It was just—it's just made for like upper, upwardly mobile, like you know, tech employees in uh, coastal cities. Um, dude, what was it? Laura Wasser? Yeah, she's stunning. I think like she looks really, really good, and she's a fucking killer, dude. She wins every case. She she does not lose this woman. Look how hot she is. Yeah, she's super. Joe, 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 Joe. Excuse me, I'm signed into my other person's account where I'm not supposed to get a fucking commercial. You fucking. Can we watch those? That's a great question. Yeah, John. I don't know. You got to keep. You got to be on your fucking toes. I guess I feel I'll like just... I, I feel like Ida's like if we were okay, in Vietnam. This doesn't need to be an indictment on my. It is if we we're in Vietnam and we were like in the God. jungle. I'm like that seasoned like scarred face sergeant from platoon, and Ida's like the new wet behind the ears lieutenant when it comes <laughs> to like digging through internet archives. I'll be like, let's just play Spider Man Two. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I know. Watch this. Let's just let's put watch on thirty mean minutes. Girls. It's like Ida's like a substitute teacher. She'll come in here. I know. <laughs> just pop a movie on. Oh, dude! Here's Laura Wasser uh, testifying. Yes. You guys play Law and Order on Hate, or I'm sorry, Law and Crime on Hate Watch all the time, right? I don't know. Probably. Probably. That's her. She's testifying in the Johnny Depp trial. Did I love you? how we went from Gaza and Palestinian children, like to this. This is unbelievable. Well, this is- gave this letter on or around May 24, 2016. Thank you. John okay. Oliver. Next page, please. She's hot, right? She looks good. Yeah, Hang she's on. got an Adam's apple like a tranny, but <laughs> I love talking shit about beautiful women and Ida just getting mad. It's just like, <laughs> yes. It like, was what is the point? Time. What's the point of trying for like for for for, for, May for, for ogres like this to call you uh, yeah. less than <laughs> less than you standard? Have any Unbelievable. She's bro. mid. Yeah. No, you know who's like the hottest girl of all time? I was watching fucking Mandy. Let me guess, a man? (laughs) A man, yeah. No, I was watching fucking uh, Mandy. Did you see Mandy with Nick Cage? No, but it's it's but it's interesting. Mandy from Mandy. Man, it starts with stunning. (laughs) Man, very good, Ida. Very good. You're killing it right now, pal. (laughs) You're doing it, bud. I was up and then I went down. Uh (laughs) Uh, What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so Laura. She was just she just looked like a goddess walking in there. But anyways, uh, Gaza children donate to them. I don't, of course, know if any of this money like goes to... donate to kids in Mongolia. Okay, donate to children. Yes. Just donate to children. Sure, Poor but like children, you, you know, this help. isn't a time for Saint Jude. This is a time to do. I mean, that's always a time for Saint Jude. I mean, obviously, but, donate to Saint Jude first. That immediately affects your vicinity. But. Sure, yeah, but also there's like a like just an epic humanitarian disaster taking yeah. place that our country is kind of sanctioning by allowing it to happen. Um, so basically, the inside scoop is that Biden and Netanyahu are at odds. Surprise, surprise. Um, one of them is conscious, so he has a leg up. Uh, and Netanyahu, you know, he, he, he doesn't, they don't have to fucking really listen to us, dude. Cause we're going to fund them regardless. There's too big of a deep state. Honestly, that's the word for it, apparatus around our funding of Israel. And it's too long, uh, uh of a tradition. You could say that, mm. uh, for a president to come in and break that. And you know what? It really should be Biden the president that has the balls to do this because he's so old and he's going to croak so soon anyway, because I would understand, I wouldn't understand, but if you were, let's say JFK, right? JFK, who, who did have the balls to try to abolish the CIA. If you had the balls to do that, they're going to fucking whack you, bro. Like we know that history's told us that. Um, so 
someone in the Pentagon, somebody in the State Department, somebody in the, you know, Mossad, CIA, whatever, they're going to come for you if you try to defund our biggest ally. That's just what it is. Uh, the yeah. same way if you try to end the Vietnam War or abolish an intelligence agency, they're going to fucking come for you. It's just not really going to happen. It takes a lot of balls to stand up to the entire Democratic and Republican Party and be like, listen, I'm done funding this genocide. Um, and then you go on and you can do a thing like Bill Clinton and way later be like, you know, I really, I really regret not stepping in for the Rwandan genocide. It's like, well, that's easy to say 20 years after the fact during a little 60 minutes interview, the same way it was easy for like Mad Madeline Albright to come out 30 years after, uh, you know, uh, the, the 1953, uh, coup d'etat where they overthrew the elected leader in Iran Mossadegh and say on behalf of the U S oh, you know what? Like our bad. Yeah. It's easy to say that 30 years after the fact when it's like the news cycle's not hot, nobody cares. Nobody has any attention span or understanding of history anyway. So they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, but the time to do it is now is when it's happening. And, Biden's not going to stand up to them. He can say, he can condemn it publicly and say, he can even say through his press secretary or whoever, like, oh, we don't support this. Netanyahu, I've been telling, been having private conversations with, you know, the president of Israel or the prime minister of Israel and saying, you know, we need to do a ceasefire, no ground invasion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you're not going to uh, make any of the aid that you give that country conditional. So really your words are empty. They mean nothing and you're just posturing. So you don't look like a, like a senseless, uh, fucking sociopathic asshole mm -hmm. in front of the entire country. That's watching this genocide unfold. Uh, so if you're not going to step in and do anything material with your power, then what the fuck are you there for? Other than to just, you know, I mean, we know you're not there for much, but if there was a president that I would say should stand up to this, absolutely insane uh you know deep state really it should be the oldest guy in there because how many fucking years do you have left anyway what do you expect? just fucking what do you expect? you're gonna die soon just what do something real towards the end yeah stop this you could stop this like you could literally through executive order or whatever you could make it stop one guy could make this stop you need and he's not brutal, doing it fat fucking uh true that uh a fat american John. Brutal man, me <laughs> go in there. No, you, you just need, need a guy a in a suit. You need a guy, no, you need a guy to see. You need a fucking uh, Dick Cheney style style guy to go in there and be like, "This ends now." Um, yeah. But uh, the uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, speaking of Rwanda, I think it was like it's like it's like. So I read I read a book called Shake Hands of the Devil, and it, it was like a tome. I swear to God, I think it was like this thick, and it was written by uh, uh, I think it's like Romeo Dillier. He's the um, uh, he was the in charge of the UN forces in Rwanda, mm. and uh, I think he's the highest ever, highest ranking military official in like NATO to ever be diagnosed with like combat PTSD. He had like two suicide attempts post genocide um, because of the things he saw, and uh, it was it was kind of startling when you have it's it's almost like a lack of. It's 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 a combination of bureaucracy and then yeah. just nobody really taking their like uh, putting their sh their career on the line career on the line. It's you nobody wants to lose their security clearance. Like it's like it's crazy and it's nobody it's wants so to funny. lose the funding the the funding of the neck. They don't want to get primary exactly. Their next campaign. It's like nobody wants it's to stick their bullshit. fucking necks out. No. Um, I mean, and uh, what it's not why people get into politics to begin with. It's not. It's often not to do. No. Not to serve. <laughs> the no. Public. And, yeah, and no. it's but but also the other thing is is like is like okay. Uh, uh, first something like Rwanda. I I could I could definitely see, um, uh, as me as a U.S. president being like I'm not gonna send U.S. troops over there. Like why would they die for this? But at the same time, it's like okay. Uh, I, th I think. Well, I think. How much time like, we spent like with Somalia though? Like, well, Somalia was a response to Rwanda, where it was like mm -hmm. the, we were so heavily critica criticized because we have Africom, which is how many died in the Rwanda genocide? I want us. I it was. I know the lot. number's four. Um, and uh, I don't know if Africom was a thing <laughs> back then. Uh, but uh, let's see. God, that was maybe the first news. Eight hundred to one million people were killed in Rwanda. Crazy numbers. And How many? 800,000 to 1 million people were killed in the Rwanda genocide. And you know what's crazier about that? With Israel, Palestine, these people are getting killed with artillery and machine guns. The majority of deaths in Rwanda were done by machete. Mm. So, uh, that's the most, you know, uh, Rwanda right now is like a UN Disneyland. 
Like, I swear to God, I, I when I was in Kenya, this is 10 years ago. When I was in Kenya, everyone was like, yeah, go to Rwanda. It's fucking amazing. It's so mm-hmm. safe. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't, you can't, you can walk down the street as a woman at night. It's perfectly fine. Same thing with Uganda, which kind of had a More similar kind of like civil war. Because there's so many security forces there now. Because they're like, the Hutus and the Tutsis um, uh, were just like, I think the Hutus are the ones who per- perpetuated the genocide. I could be wrong. I don't know. One of them was tall. One of them was short. And that was the that was the thing. Is like at the beginning of the Rwanda genocide, they sent out radio signals saying cut down all the tall trees, which alerted all the. That's right. Yeah, um, but uh, it was the <sighs> first manlit genocide. But anyways, uh, God, it's so horrific. You think? <laughs> oh, it's god awful. I mean, look at the Armenians; they're being genocided right now by the Azeris and. Uh, which I stand they, as they a were fake genocided. Uh, what or Azerbaijan? Oh, Azerbaijan? Well, it used to be part of Iran. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's I'm, a Soviet I'm, proxy state. I'm technically fully Azeri Iranian. Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm I, I Azerbaijani the, Persian. There's something about Azeris that make my other friend is Azari, but uh, uh, yeah, there's like these proxy states that just shouldn't exist anymore. Kuwait's one of them. Azar, Azerbaijan. Sure. I mean, listen, the, the, this this region also, you know, Soviet. They all redraw their borders every fucking few years, so it's yeah. it's uh, you know, I don't mean to. Well, the Israelis are giving predator drones or drones to Azaris. So, oh, is that um, right? Oh God, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's um. It's not looking great. Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but from everything I'm looking at, like all the news I've looked at, just it just continues to say that the worst mm-hmm. possible outcome is the most likely. I really hope that's not the case because that implies that we're going to get dragged into it. Uh, because, going back to the sandbox, baby. Yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to then send troops to Iran, which I think we've already sent some sort of military fleet of some kind out there on some small scale uh you know we're we've been, we've been shooting down we're, missiles. we're prepping like we're prepping for a bad bad doomsday kind of scenario now obviously that doesn't necessarily mean anything's going to break out of course everybody's always like oh people are always you know talking about nuclear annihilation and it's like the big hot thing and it's like yeah nobody wants to like beat a dead horse like we don't like want to assume that this happens but you are always like li- a little just like one or two or three steps a miss for that to be on the table. Does and Iran like, have ICBM capabilities? What the fuck do I know about anything? I'm sorry, I'm doing all this background research. Keep the talking. ICBMs, honey, I don't know. Okay. I just work here. Um, yeah, it's it's fucked up, dude. I don't know. It, it's uh, the, the, the fact that the death toll keeps rising on the Gazan side and nobody seems to care really about the number of casualties they just keep talking about. I mean, Michael Rappaport... Have you seen this guy? I hate him. Have you? I remember I made a joke about He's one like, of the most annoying. I just want to state people. here publicly. I'm 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 hereby <laughs> ending my parasocial relationship with Michael Rappaport. I'm I glad. Did, I joked, you know, several episodes ago that I would replace John with him because I think he's a kook. And Michael Rappaport, he sucks ass. Literally, he sucks ass. Melted brain. I, you just dude for real. Boomer, boomer. No, Gen X retard. Like I'm on I'm honest. He's he's like the worst end of the spectrum of what a boomer can be. He's not a boomer. He's Gen X, and and oh, the, true, the new boomers yeah. are Gen X, and they Bro. fucking suck ass. If you're Gen well, X, I'm not going to assume every your whole Gen political X identity. Sucks ass. I am the whole political kind of identity of Gen X is like Beavis and Butthead. That's like they're like, that's the height of like of intellectual like entertainment <laughs> and and from Gen X. I hear it's um, a great show. What? Beavis and Butthead. Very good, Michael. He's still rocking the Tiger King profile picture. Here we go. There's, he's posted several. Uh, Oh, IDF soldiers, hot IDF soldiers. As a parent, he is oh, a Jew. Wait, he wait, is a Jew. I get Child. it, dude. You can be a Jew, dude. There's a lot of Jews that are t- t- coming out against their government. Uh, they mostly live in Israel. Nobody cares about them, though. This is why. Peace. I have a question. I'm serious. Peace. 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 Everybody wants peace. Peace. I have a question, a serious, serious, yeah, what genuine that question. If there was a ceasefire, if there was a ceasefire, what would happen next? How do the hostages get released? And would people would the Israeli government try to get on them? On behalf of no, you have an those NGO hostages? deal with it's it. It's hard for me to believe, or any Jewish person, to believe right now that people would pro- protest on behalf of the released hostages what now. You, his brain is like not. Because yeah, he short motherfuckers <laughs> didn't protest. Get him some more cafelta fish. Beha- <laughs> well, uh, some white cafelta yeah. fish? Well, here, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, like, preface this before I even continue talking. Hmm. Uh, like, just, again, I know we say it's like every episode. Um, 
uh, radical Islamic uh, terror organizations are literally probably the most inhuman savages on planet Earth and all deserve to die and be a, a slow, painful death. Mm-hmm. Um, whether or not uh, people always talk about the conditions in which they were born, uh, yeah, that's uh, but like this like more relativist argument. But like the thing about that is like, for example, like people, it's like the same thing when people are like, well, you know, pedophiles were often molested themselves. And it's like, yeah, but there's tons of people out there have been like molested who aren't fucking pedophiles. Okay. There's tons of people living in the Arab world who grew up in a war zone who don't join radical groups and just want to live their fucking lives. People also need to understand like an explanation yeah. of something is not a justification. Not at of all. It. It's yeah. merely a, a context so that you can deeper understand why these things yeah. come to be and how to avert that. Exactly, that, that too, yeah. It's, that's really all it is. So, you know, when people say like, oh, what do you think happens when you fuck your kid? They're going to fuck another kid. What do you think happens when you, uh, grow, you know, raise people in horrific uh, conditions? All they know and is then combat. They, and they grow up to, to become animal. It's like, well, yeah, these are yeah. these are like very valid questions. No part of us is justifying that. And I mean, I don't even know what this idiot's about to say, but you could tell his like eyes are somewhere else. His brain is somewhere else. Yeah. He's like not fully there. He's obviously, I don't know if he did psychedelics. I don't know if this is just what happens oh, he's, when he's, he's age. Tons of marijuana. Okay, um, this is not a result of marijuana, Tons John. of marijuana usage. This is not, do you think this marijuana kind of- Marijuana turns you into Michael Rappaport. I mean, John- and Wait till you're 50. You're going to talk just like this. You're going to be like- that. Myself. But at the same time, like that being said, we'll, we can talk about all the, the conditions which that create these terrorist groups after they're all murdered and killed, in my opinion. Okay, so, okay, yeah, right. there we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I don't like yeah. them. Nobody likes them. We, yes. we, we wish them all nothing but the horror that they've inflicted yes. on other people. Yes. Nobody's denying that fact. Absolutely. But he is sitting here. I think what he's about to say is that the is that the violence should continue because the hostages aren't going to be saved anyway. I think that's what he's about to say. I could be wrong. Of the hostages the day after. People were in the street celebrating. People were in the street hooting and hollering. Professors from universities were saying that it was invigorating. Some sick animal in Philadelphia said, fuck them, there should have been more. So... The question is, if there was a ceasefire, what happens next? How would they get the 200 plus hostages back if they're even alive? And if there was a ceasefire, would you, would you, would you protest to get them back? Would you, dude? I'll wait. Also, like, also, also, out, what is, fucking also, hold on. What is, what is the point of that question? What does it matter if there's a protest? Is the protest going to change the the actions of the politicians here? Like, what what are you talking about? Not necessarily, my dude. Like, this is a little insane. I mean, listen, he's just so out this of his fucking gourd here. This, there's no way. Oh, here we go. Yeah, pick with the isolate. Yeah, pick pick just this, whatever this pisses me off. This is not a real off. account. This, there's no way. Oh, you idiot. Account. Oh, God, you nothing. Because look at the account. And has anybody else noticed a tremendous increase in fake accounts saying this, saying free Palestine, saying from the river to the sea, yada, yada, yada. Can't even has, has anyone so else stupid. noticed that? Yeah, imagine like being, from imagine just like going to his house and you just want to watch an old episode of, of you know, Worth fucking Curb Your Enthusiasm and he keeps no doing followers. this. Uh, these are robots. These are robot fake accounts. And for all you people that are saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the window to the wall. Yeah, uh, 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 I, I just I, I can't fucking. I, I just a lot of like the American perspective on these terror groups also is again, we talked about this last episode is that they're like just these senseless murder machines. Um, they can be negotiated with. Yeah, and 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 oh, they they do respond to violence. <laughs> like, yeah. So I mean, if you really wanted to escalate, like I think, like I don't know how these fucking things go. Man. I just I'm know. I just know one guy. thing: the eradication of Hamas should not come at the cost of thousands of kids and 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 just anybody anybody dying. Mm-hmm. That it, I mean, it, it it's it's absurd to me. The fact that they they treat these people like absolute collateral damage and nothing else. And just just I mean, a a lot of the really right wing coalitions in Israel have stated overtly that they want to 
wipe them all out because they're like lost causes. They're like animals, whatever. That's not to say that Hamas isn't, uh, you know, they're not anti-Semitic and want to wipe out Israel, of course. But the difference is, is that not everybody in Palestine is a supporter of Hamas. And this is like, this is, this is, I mean, I could sit here and, and beat this drum all day, but like everybody that has half a brain knows this, except this retard. What river are you talking about? What river and what sea? What's the name of them? Let me know. Let me know. I mean, this guy's like, it's it's actually funny. That's, his, that's his like Blade Runner robot test. He's like, what river runs through Israel? I actually think he's pro-Palestine and he's just being such an insane goon. To, to, yeah, I don't to, think he's a fucking, I don't I'm, think he's like wants to kill Palestinians. Oh, no, I think he does. No, I think he does. Really? Yeah. He doesn't, he's, he's literally he's defending. He's like an old man. Look he's defending go. war and, and a murder of them saying that what, he's, he's completely ignoring. I really think if you're conveniently ignoring. If I. You can defend. He's, he's the dumbest Ashkenazi Jew the... on planet Earth. He's just uh, as his parent had a child in college. He looks just like Joy <laughs> Behar, actually. He just reminds <laughs> me of Joy Behar. Screaming and yelling anti-Semitic things, and my child was at a college that I was spending my hard-earned money for. Saying from the river to the sea. This is all you can say. This, that, and the third. This, that, and the third. and hooting. Yeah, I'd slap the fuck out of my kid. I'd be like, what are you doing? Terrorist apologist. Me, I would I would stop paying for this child to go to college or university anymore because obviously the university is failing or that child has been cutting class and not getting Oh, he's educated. not even here. Oh, he's gone. Parents. He's gone. Oh, he's so gone, dude. I can't even. Screaming and yelling. I can't even uh, be mad. He's just. He's. He's. AD. I feel his brain has completely melted. You can't even. You. You can't even. You can't reason with a guy that's this far gone. I just. Just a second of his last one. I remember. This is. Cease fire and what? Cease fire, and what? Turn These down for what? Are going to release. The hostages? Yes, dipshit. You and, cease and fire what, and negotiate. Then what happens? Do we sit down and have some coffee? Well, the, what then happens <laughs> is that 200 people that are Israeli yes. get to live. Yeah, isn't that isn't fire. that a good thing? Cease fire and what? And your hostages live. Cease fire and what? I just told you, Michael. Michael, you can you not hear me? We got the Michael Rappaport. Oh, to sweet the Michael. Of children beheading raping you don't believe it dig 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 in the in the in the you want to see that shit you need to see the beheading of children if you don't believe it dig deep you can find it you sick fuck if you don't believe it only would just like you didn't didn't believe the holocaust happened right some people oh it's not six million it was it was less than a million cease firing what and what? There's no ceasefire. There's no negotiating. There's no discussions. Hamas doesn't give a fuck about oh, they do. Did you talk to them? Oh, they do. Except for the destruction of Israel. And, and the, the destruction, destruction of those hostages if you don't Jews, fucking talk to them. Black Jews, Hamas has bosses Jews, that like live in Lebanon. Spanish and shit. Jews. Every oh, single yes. you fucking Jew you fucking go after their families that are being educated in Brussels. Okay, that's what you do as an intelligence agency if you want to free these hostages. You start threatening where the money starts, and you start really fucking with those people. They and don't then, want those hostages. They want those hostages dead so that they can oh, yeah. justify a ground invasion. Car, car, um, well, they already. They already will. Invasion. They're already going to yeah. do that. But but if those hostages come back, then they would have no real reason to do the ground invasion. They would they wouldn't be able to justify it on the world stage. Not that they're yeah. really able to now, but they're going to escape by without any sort of condemnation from from the West who funds them. So that's uh, we're the only ones that really have any control over this because we literally fund them. So uh, you know if 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 Daddy Warbucks Biden came in and was like, no more of this. No ground invasion or no three billion or however much we send to you annually or whatever, whatever like the number is. The scope of things now. It's I don't crazy. think it's three billion. I think it's, it's uh, like three hundred billion. I think <laughs> it wasn't six billion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Very good. Idea. I'm going to cut that out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's horrific. Um, um, yeah, it, it's uh, you know. I don't know. I, I I have nothing really else to say other than we are watching and witnessing and. 
kind of consenting to this because nobody's there are a lot of protests it, you know turkey actually is trying to rile up their population did you see the turkey protest did you see the uzbeki or no the, i think it was dagestani yeah i saw that but that did, was crazy but did you but yeah. see the? did you see how many people came out in droves for the palestinian cause in turkey of course erdogan's just using this because he's trying to get more islamic people you know riled up or whatever it's not necessarily because yeah. he's such a great human being but um that doesn't change the fact that there were like a you know, so many people in Turkey coming out in droves. I'd love to go to Turkey. I would too. My it's mom so says beautiful. Istanbul is one of the most beautiful places she's ever seen. But um, you know, um, so this is on the this is on the horizon. There's there's no real drinking water. They can't eat. There's no electricity. Um, babies are on incubators that are getting unplugged. Um, there are children climbing out of rubble. Some are many are not climbing out because they are deceased. Uh, there is unbelievable amounts of dust and you know particulates and yeah, awful be shit being inhaled. And- so even if you live through this, the odds are you are going to get some sort of life altering or life you know ending disease of some kind, respiratory illnesses, what have you. Things that you know a lot of the firefighters and nine eleven, the first responders, still to this day deal with if they are in fact alive. Uh, John Stewart, you know, famously advocated for that. So that's going to happen quite a bit in Gaza. Um, obviously, I'm not saying that the Israelis are without uh, tragedy here. This is obviously an awful thing that was inflicted upon them. Um, but you don't, you should not respond in kind, uh, especially when you could very easily get these hostages back, I think, or have a significant shot at it if you even tried. I, don't I know mean, about that. Felix told me that there was like an actor they, they that he hired... Um, fuck what was i gonna say he they hired like these this is what i oh yeah michael rapaport tweeted this ridiculous thing where he said israel is striking gaza not for gold oil money or land israel is striking gaza for the return of the hostages oh the hostages that you just said in this video what's the point of trying to get them okay dude he says for the return of hostages and the destruction of hamas the terrorist organization that controls gaza I was like, okay. Um, I said, they fund Hamas. Yeah. Well, right. I know. I said, damn. All this time, I was under the impression that Gaza was a treasure trove of gold, money, uh, and, and yeah, oil. Gaza's a- and oil. I stand corrected. But um, and it's like, even if they have reserves, they have no control over the reserves of who the fuck. Even if you're gonna say there is oil, whatever, whatever, dude, they have no control over it. Um, and then Felix responded. He goes, it's so incredible that anyone still believes this long after the Israeli government has told the families to fuck off the hostage families. Um. It replaced them with actors and stopped recording how they died. I was like, what? They replaced him with actors. He's like, he says, yeah, they literally hired an actor to play the role of a hostages family and cheer for Netanyahu. LOL. It's such a fucking low rent state. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, I, yeah. I, I didn't look into that, but I believe him. He's pretty well researched. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, there's really nothing else to say, but, um, you know, Halloween tomorrow. So, <laughs> spooky i had an insane weekend uh i don't know how i i guess i should should i save that for the page i don't know i had a celeb run in with a i went to some house party in bel-air for five seconds it was really insane there was a lot of security a lot of bimbos a lot of freaks uh went to some uh raves and some various parties and had an interesting time um what did you do on halloween oh yeah you went to a party oh john john called me on halloween and it's not halloween i called you like two days ago whatever you know what i mean i was halloween. at a, i was i got absolutely blitzed at a house party you got blitzed at a house party I wanted, I wanted to go hang out and uh i was very drunk he was very drunk yeah. i was with some friends um and everyone in was downtown like, who's that retard calling you it was yeah john was like where are you i'm coming i'm like we're leaving this ri- we're leaving this concert we're going to all my friends house went party. home Ida was having a blast on her story, and I thought, "Oh, you were checking my story." Yes, I didn't know that. I check everybody's. I want to see what everybody's up to. Oh, okay. You act like you're the only one I called that night. I was calling <laughs> everybody. Everybody got a call. He wouldn't let me hang up. He would not let me hang up. I don't remember this. You would like. I was like, okay, I was, I was like, a, okay, John, gotta go. Here's the deal. I want to. I want to be amongst the rich and famous like Ida. I feel like I'm a little. I feel like I'm. Uh, uh, he kept being like, "Are you embarrassed to me? Are you embarrassed to me?" I was like, "Dude, it was I, I so I feel like Quasimodo sad. in his tower. I know. And I, I want to be. Uh, uh, what's the song? 
one day. Did you like fucking uh, Hunchback? I love Hunchback Sleeping and, Beauty. No, no, Hunchback of Notre Dame. I didn't watch that one. That's the best Disney movie. Isn't it's it? It's so fucking good. Is it the one where it's, yeah, I know which one. Hellfire. Anyways, but um, yeah. And yeah, then, uh, so he called me and I said, okay, Well, the funny thing leaving. is if Ida was like, he gave me an actual address, I wouldn't have gone. Right. But I, and I will, at that point was like, okay, I'll just give him the fucking address because he's just being crazy. But I didn't even have the address yet. Mm. And you kept thinking I had the address. Of me. No, see, this is what you did. You thought that I was lying about not having the address. I was like, we don't have the address. We're getting the I address. I just capped, dude. I it just was, capped. Uh, I was what? I was capped? I just capped. And, uh. What does that mean? Sus. I'm, I'm sus? I'm <laughs> fucking with you. I mean. Um, I no, but being... I, I went, my, my, I have a, uh. He was also going to drive there. Should... Oh yeah, I drove. Ugh. Uh I uh uh I have a very anyways, but I I started reading my friend's book that he wrote. It's called Surrender mm. uh, by Brian O'Hare. Pick Surrender it up if you can. to the fact that you ain't coming to this house party in Listen, Bel-Air, buddy, dude. This book is so fucking good. Uh all of you should read it. And uh the uh yeah, I went I went home. Now I'm house sitting for my sister and uh her cat's great. And yeah, I'm just I wake up and I cook. Mm. And then I lay down and you know what I watched? Mm. I have, I don't really have a TV and you're going to be so disgusted with me. What did you watch? I have access to all the media. Yeah. As a person with Amazon and Netflix and all these things, all these amazing films I could be watching. Yeah. Yeah. I watched a, a Wayne's brother, uh scary movie. Like what was it? What was the movie about? Um, Oculus or some shit. Not Oculus. What's some paranormal activity? Mm. I watched their paranormal activity spoof, and there's about a five minute long sex scene where he fucks a teddy bear in it. What movie is this? I think it's called like Scary. I think it's called like the Haunted House or some shit. Okay. It was so bad, but I watched it all, and I could have watched anything. I could have watched like an Oscar winning movie, and I watched. Oh, of that. course you did this. This is your mo. You could have yeah. watched Sopranos, but you're gonna watch, you know, fucking American Pie. <laughs> well, it's crazy because that scene. There's a if you guys can look that up. There's a scene in that where he has sex with a teddy bear, and it's the most unhinged thing I've ever seen in my life. It's incredibly graphic. It goes on way too long. It's as uncomfortable as the rape scene and irreversible. It's about as long as well. Um, What's irreversible? A uh, Gaspar Noe film where there's a nine minute long rape scene. That's mm-hmm. like the worst thing you'll ever watch in your life. I rewatched um, um, Buffalo 66 last night. Love uh, that film. Yeah, it's interesting. Love Brown Bunny too. The the, the rewatch of that uh, after not having seen it since I was a kid. Uh, it was, I mean, and I, I didn't even ever see the full thing. I don't think it's a kid. I, I rewatched it in full. Maybe I did, but it's been so long. Um it's just shot so well. It's just shot so fucking cool. I mean, it's, you yeah, know. Vincent Gallo's the coolest guy of all time. He's, just, he's it's, 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 so it's, attractive. Here's the thing he's about Vincent so Gallo. Hot. I could watch Vincent Gallo walk around in a coat that is way too small for winter buffalo uh, for like two hours, but three he, hours, but, five hours. Well, we all know watch him walk around with, with his little beetle boots on and a little tiny denim jacket. Oh, oh fuck yeah. Let's Sorry, guys. It, <laughs> that was so um, loud. Brown Bunny, I can watch Vincent Gallo drive around on his uh, Supermoto motorcycle for hours as well. He's the coolest guy of all time. He's just great. I can't watch him getting head for that long because that's an uncomfortable scene. But uh, um, Yeah, yeah. There, um, there are moments where you're just kind of like, I, I can't believe this is. Um, yeah. This was made. But uh, that's most of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty graphic. Yeah. Uh. It's just uh, the the offbeat humor is great, but then you start to uh, offbeat humor is amazing in that film. It's so funny. The we span time together. We oh the span make time. Make it seem was like great. we span time. We span time. Also, it's a really good depiction of someone who. It reminds me of Clay. Him in that movie really reminds me of Clay. Uh, like he's incapable of love. Like what? No, uh, no. Like no. he's abusive. <laughs> he's an no, abusive asshole. No, incapable no, I, of love. I know that's what you want to think about Clay. <laughs> but no, what do you, just, no, what just, are you saying? Just, just weird but cool. Like I don't know, uh, offbeat humor. Like, like make people uncomfortable. Um, that movie reminds me of Jordan. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, how because there's an autistic. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Oh, there's an autistic okay. side of uh, Vince Gallo in that. Oh, yeah. Oh, cut to- this whole thing. Out. Totally. <laughs> cut this whole I didn't say anything. <laughs> I just, said that. That's you so just mean. said I what that um, he's autistic. Yeah, but uh, the uh, Vince uh, Gallo. Yeah, no, Vincent Gallo in that movie is really good. And uh, what other things have I been... 
Read my book. I'm being harassed by a rooster every day. There's a rooster that just. What, every... what side is it on? Is it on this side of the street? I or think the it's, other I side think it's the, the new neighbors across the street. They got a rooster. I, I think they have two roosters. Okay, we too. talked about this. They... I didn't handle your problem. We didn't talk about this. Me, oh, me and Dev talked about this. Oh, I know is how to, he, I know has how to he been fix talking this. about it? Yeah, I know how to it's, fix this it. This thing goes off, dude, every single day. Yeah, I know how to fix it. I'm not going to hurt the rooster. Kill I'm, the rooster. I'm not going to kill. Don't Here comes the rooster. rooster. Very good. Very yeah. good. You gotta get okay. So you get a piece of PVC pipe, right? You get a piece of PVC pipe and you get a rubber glove and you cut the uh, like a finger off the glove and you kind of stretch it over the PVC pipe and you you pull the rubber glove back and just make a I'm really good. I've, I've decided to take I've ta- I've take, taken the approach with the rooster because the rooster goes off all day long. He goes off once in the, you know, at the crack of dawn. He goes off. Luckily, he, he keeps it together between the hours of, like, yeah. 1 to 5 a.m. But uh, every other hour of the day, he just, he's just, like, going going off. <laughs> every five How times. often? Like, a lot. <laughs> Multiple times a day. You have to, like, put, you should, like, print out signs and be like, hey, like, I understand. They just bought this house. This yeah, I'd be like, I have. understand you have a dedication to homesteading, but you, <laughs> you also need to understand you live in California and you need to end this. Yeah. You're not in fucking Arkansas. You live in you don't Los need a Angeles. Fucking rooster. The Mexicans got rid of the roosters years ago. I haven't seen roosters here in a while. When I was 10 years ago, I'd see roosters, roosters running around. They're I used roosters. to capture my neighbor's rooster when it would get out. When Aww, I lived at Ball Heights. I'd go pick so it up. But they're so cute. I can't No, they're not. They're upset. little velociraptors with big I fucking know, pussy it's necks. Kind of it's nice. Not... It's kind of nice having a neighborhood rooster. Well, then shut up about it. <laughs> but it's annoying as well. Yeah. But I like animals because here's the thing. There's no solution. No solutions, only trade-offs, right? So so I'm, I'm over here left to my own devices of like, well, what am I going to do? Tell them to get rid of their pet? You it's know? not their pet. It's their fucking vanity chicken. That's it's what a, it is. Okay, but it's a but the chicken is still a chicken. It's a dumb pet, man. It's but a the dumb chicken. Pet. If you're white and you own a rooster large. in Los Angeles, suck my dick. That rooster's living large, dude. That, that rooster is that is. rooster's living very well. It's gonna live for the next few years. I guarantee you that. It's gonna fuck. bother you for this is a year. Fuck. For years, you're going to deal with this. Well, I just figure someone in the neighborhood's going to complain about it. It's not going to be me. It's going to be somebody I, else. I don't think there's anything you can do about it because I guarantee you there's, there's some nothing. lame-ass city ordinance where they're like, well, they're allowed to have <laughs> this so amount laws. of livestock and on their property. They're, amount, they're allowed one pig, one cow, and one rooster. What about noise, though? Well, the, the it's fine. It's, it's yeah, natural you know people noise. Have, people have dogs that bark all the fucking time. I don't really see how this is that different. True. Yeah, maybe. No, people have dogs that are like, dude, I'm so sick of the fucking dogs in this neighborhood, dude. The, the dogs in this neighborhood, let me just like for a second, because this is like the fucking dog park. This is too Halloween town for me. Let's go to Nemo. Spooky. All right. Yeah. You want some, you want some oldies playing in the background? Yeah. I want like a nice calming. Yeah. Keep talking. I mean, you know. It's just like, have a little respect. People get pit bulls in this fucking neighborhood. They don't train them. Okay. I saw a pit bull at the store the other day, like, like, uh, run up on some like old woman. Oh, that's I, crazy. Oh, it, Who was it, the owner of the pit bull? Uh, fucking some girl, some young, it's like, it's always a young some, woman. Some young woman like, who I, thinks she's. I mean, I, luckily it got down, but you could t- see the terror in the woman's eyes that this pit bull is about to annihilate her. Dude, I fucking, I was in Pasadena driving down the street and there must have been a 110 pound fucking like little hip Asian chick that had the <sighs> biggest pit bull. And there was a guy with his dog and he's just walking the dog by and she could barely contain this fucking pit bull. It's, and I was um, like, if you can't insane. handle the dog, don't own the fucking dog. 100%. I had, dude, I was, I told Most you when, of them can't handle the dog. Did I tell you when I fucking had it capture a pit bull in fucking Atlanta? What? Oh my god! Okay, I was don't, if it's dead, I don't want to know. No, it's oh, okay, not, it's fine. Right. It was actually really so. I like it's actually pretty heroic on my part. It's pretty sick story, but um, I had to just give a side eye. No, I'm walking with my ex girlfriend. We're walking through this neighborhood, and she had this her her roommate had this really old dog, but it was still really spry. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we're walking down the street. It was late at night, and I see a big ass white pit bull just walk into the middle of the street no owner nothing it's just the middle of the street and it eyes the dog and starts walking towards the dog i'm i'm like and i just like beeline it towards the pit bull yeah. i had a collar on it thank god and i grab the collar and i keep it between my legs the pit bull's going crazy and uh uh there my ex-girlfriend's dog gets fucking loose 
So it runs towards a pit bull, starts barking at, and I'm kicking that dog away and keeping this pit bull. And I'm going, and luckily this guy walked by, and I was like, "Yo, can you just hold this dog while we walk this dog away?" And he's like, "Yes." Yeah. So we get the dog back in the leash and walk away. She was so fucking pissed at me. Who was my ex girlfriend? She's like, what? "Just let the dog shred up the dog. You could have gotten killed." <laughs> like it was, yeah. I, she was right. Like yeah, I could have gotten yeah, really you, fucked up. You could have, yeah. I get it. Luckily, I'm powerful. I don't uh, listen. You know? I think we should send every pit bull in this country to Ukraine. What do you say? So, you know. Fucking in lieu of weapons, hey, since we, since we can't strap mines to them, send them to Ukraine. We can't, we can't fund you and Israel, dude. So you can have all of our, uh, you can have our Ozempic and you can have our pit bulls. That'd be so funny if, if like, if I became president and Zelensky's like, please let me have my check, daddy. And I'm like, I'll send you 3,000 pit bulls. <laughs> dude, instead of, instead of confiscating guns, you just get the cop, you just get the cops out there yeah. saying like, we're the people, they think that they're going to take their guns and they, yeah. in fact, they just take every pit bull. I'm going to send you every household. 20 Alabama sheriff's deputies, 3,000 pit bulls, and then 10 shotguns. Mm -hmm. And you can go. I mean, this idea that, like, you shouldn't be scared of a pit bull. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm terrified of them. You should be scared of any dog. Uh, for sure. There's incredibly uh, aggressive breeds out there Especially that pit bull Dalmatians breeds. Dalmatians are vicious. And, you know, the people that are, like, the what are those, like, pit bull defenders where their whole life is dedicated to, like, yeah. the, the advocacy and PR of a, of a, of a dog? Yeah, it's so <laughs> Like, can you imagine that's like your life yeah, purpose? That's insane. It's so fucking. The pathetic. scariest dog I ever met was not a pit bull. The scariest dog I ever met was a fucking half German Shepherd, half Great Dane. Have so you ever seen like the, Russian, the Russian, the Russian, uh, the Russian dog. dogs? No, dude, they're they're fucking, they're crazy. And listen, if you have a pit bull, I'm not saying all pit bulls are bad. I mean, Amber some of the has, sweetest dogs. Are Amber right. has pit bulls, and they're adorable and so yeah. sweet. They are, however, known for having incredible bouts of dementia and mauling the faces of, of owners they've had for yeah. seven, eight plus years. If yeah. if they have just and like jaw. yeah, if they just have like the the tiniest inkling that something is, you know, they'll just attack. I mean, that's just like in their fucking, but it's their DNA. Like it's just what. They, it is. My know? ex girlfriend had a Dachshund that fucking got a hold of a roach trap. Ooh. And I had to get that roach trap out of its mouth. And I, it, that it's a little ass dog. And it was literally, I went to war with this dog for like 15 fucking minutes. It was so fucking hard. Oh, God. And uh, I can't imagine doing that with a pit bull. It's like, a, this is the dog I'm thinking of. It's like a black Russian, it's a black Russian terrier. These oh. things, they're fucking terrifying. They're, they're like, it's beautiful. They're, I, have had one living next to me in Dallas for a while. Mm -hmm. Their bark and the person that lived next to me didn't take care of this this military dog. And so when I was in Dallas, like, and my mom was unfortunately like fucking terrorized by this dog. It tried to it tried to jump on my mom once, and I I fucking almost. I was, I got lit at oh, this I owner. Bet. I yeah. went fucking, uh, my mom doesn't know any better. She just thought it was like a dog being friendly. Of course, she doesn't like love it. But um, yeah, they're literally, they were created in the USSR uh, to, literally, to kill. <laughs> yeah. Like they're designed to kill. So, and then this guy gets it, puts it in an apartment complex, leaves it there. Leaves Crazy. the dog there for hours and hours a day. Yeah. It's going nuts. It's living next to a chihuahua and they're like, you know, for 10 hours a day, just gone. I want an Italian Mastiff. You ever seen one of those things? You don't want one Beautiful dog. I don't want any big dogs. But it says... Uh, if I had land, I'd have a big dog. It was used for military working dogs. At the present time, the Black Russian Terrier is a breed recognized by the FCI, uh, AKC, whatever, blah, blah, blah. The contemporary Black Russian Terrier is a working dog, guarding dog, sporting, and companion dog. It's known for literally not listening to the owners. Like, this, this is, <laughs> I'm just like serious. There, you have to beat it. There are two dog breeds known for being like comic dogs or like they, they, they're either trying to fuck with your head or like they don't want to listen. And I've looked into them, you know, at length. And this is one of the ones that just like does not, it's like mixed with a, it's a giant schnauzer, a Rottweiler, Newfoundland. It's like a bunch of things mixed together, formed in the USS. Uh, yeah, I mean, literally for the fucking military. Um, yeah, like we have that mil. What's the big famous military dog we're constantly using? The fucking uh, German Shepherd, right? No, it's a different one. It's like a short haired. It looks like a German. It looks like a shepherd, but short haired. It's the dog that killed the leader of ISIS. Remember that hero dog? No. That killed the leader of ISIS. He had a suicide vest on, and they said like. It was a weird story. It was like uh, these like Navy SEALs went in and like killed leader vices. They said he was about to detonate a suicide vest. And then they were like the hero dog that tracked him down. I think that was a psyop to let pe all those guys in ISIS know that a dog mauled their leader to death. And I think we let dogs maul him to death. Oh, my God. Because they hate dogs in the Arab world. And we were like, hey, your greatest insult is to be killed by a dog. Do you remember when the Turkmeni uh, 
we've played this video before, but we should play it again. But before oh, him picking up the dog. That was, that was so cute that when he, he gave it to Putin and it was like Putin's little puppy in his hand. Uh, God, it's fucking, that dog was so no. cute. Uh, but it says the care, the black Russian terrier, because of its breeding as a working dog, has a very strong work ethic and needs a job in order to be happy. Yes. Early training is a must. And this was a foreign family living next to us that did not even speak a lick of English. Uh, just got this dog as a guard dog. I think they were like dealing drugs. I don't know what they were doing out mm. of that house. Nobody was sleeping. That's there. a funny dog to have for a trap house. It, it's a big poodle. They weren't. They, well, it's a big poodle, but it's aggressive and yeah. loud. The bark like is insane. And its hair, is, its face is so shaggy and black. It's, it's like, a you terrifying dog. You wouldn't even know where the bite's dog. coming from. It's, it's like, a, exactly. It's a demon. It's a literal demon. It's a little demon. It's the I hounds hate of the this Baskerville. kind of dog. Like, I hate them. Oh, a uh, Scottish deer hound. That's another dog I want. Um. I don't want any dog. Um, I'm a Doberman guy too. I love dogs, but I, I really do love them. But I, I under, I, I respect the task that is owning one, and uh, yeah. it is essentially like having a child. And most people shouldn't even have kids. So, mm. um, I'm not antinatalist. I just think we should raise our standards as a, as a society and culture for what constitutes a, g a good parent or a good dog owner, for that matter. Um, but it says early training is a must. They're very, very responsive to firm, consistent training, excelling at obedience competitions. They perform well uh, with, you know, agility, blah, 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 with other dogs. They have a low shedding coat. They need to be groomed all the time. I don't even think they were grooming this dog. Um, oh, yeah, they. Okay. They breed forms of strong bond with a single person and will not thrive if sent to boarding facilities. The young black Russian terrier should not be forced to exercise as a pup and tend to sleep majority of the day because they grow so quickly. Uh, they become, oh yeah, they may become hyperactive and destructor when older, if not provided an outlet for its energy. Yeah, it would bark for hours, John. A uh, hours. I mean, it, it, li it's, it, they're just known for not listening. Yeah, there's working, there's like dogs that are like chattel. Like there's dogs that like you have to look at it like a horse. Yes. Like you can't own a fucking, and that's what I was saying. That it's dog, that hero machine. ISIS dog, like people started buying that dog after it was getting famous and shit, that same breed. And I saw this really funny post on like Reddit where it was like, this is what this dog did. And like <laughs> this guy was like, when it would bark a lot, he would put it in its in his garage. It ripped his Porsche to shreds. It was just Jesus, ripping the bumper dude. off of his Porsche, just like clawing it and shit. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. dude. Um, but yeah, Dalmatians are big cocksuckers. Those are the meanest dogs I've ever met. Dalmatians? Dalmatians really? are mean as fuck. They were, they were, they were, um, I think they were like I could be totally wrong. I'm just I might be pulling this out of my ass. Back in the day, like firefighters used to get in fist fights all the time with other firefighters. I think they were literally used by firefighters as attack dogs or like intimidation dogs. That's oh, why every fuck. firefighter had the Dalmatian. Wow. So they were such an aggressive breed. I had no idea. Yeah, Shiba um, Inos are cocksuckers too. I've heard that. Yeah, I've, been I've heard that. I, when I was a kid, I got bit in the forearm by a Shiba Inu and it got mm. locked. I had to fucking bang it against the wall to get it to let go of me. Jesus, really? Yeah. I beat dogs, dude. John, <laughs> dude, the other the other day I was scolding Devin and like as I was scolding him I was like John I swear to God I was like oh my bad That's oh you're doing the mom thing I didn't it's mean literally to. my mom it's just when I yell at you I have yeah. a certain tone my mom has the list of bad influences in her head so yeah. it's so you're making your own list of bad influences my mom would go uh uh she would go my dad father's name then my brother's name and then my name <laughs> if she if she was talking to my brother she'd always go my father's name my, his name and then my name or if it was me I she go Dan Charlie John oh fuck and it's like you're developing that right yeah, now you're just yeah. assuming. I'm a bad influence. I'm gonna do with you boys. Um, what are you doing for Halloween tomorrow? I'm going to do jujitsu um, for three, three, four hours. Straight. I'm gonna hand some candy to some cocksuckers. These kids aren't grateful Jesus. though. They really God, they relax. Well, it's just because last year they like they, they're so. God damn it! This you just got to make sure you can't wiggle it around a lot. God forbid. Yeah. Um, you know they they didn't even say thank you and they just like expected like there's like 17 year olds coming to trick or treat. I'm like yeah Bye. no. I? I saw this post on Instagram and it was like, be aware, like, you know, what? you should just be happy. These teenagers aren't out doing drugs. I'm like, yes, they're doing drugs uh, and trick or treating. They're doing drugs yeah. and trick or treating. The candy's for the children, shitheads. Right. Tr trick, 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 right. try me, trick, yeah. trick. Come here. You don't get treat. Then trick me, motherfuckers. Let's go. <laughs> I, I'm like, so that I'm so done with the infantilization of teenagers. Like, and, and it's very recent. 
it's like very recent in modern society where as like a 15 year old man, you aren't just expected to be the head of a household and yeah, they're out true. here fucking they're and, and that's very Western I, in Gaza. 15 year olds are like fucking <laughs> parachuting into the fucking West bank or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck. But like the thing is, is like out here, paragliding, it's just like, paragliding. Paragliding. you have these fucking pussies, these little kids running around be a little shit heels and thinking they can get free fucking candy. I know. Go buy, get a job and buy candy. That if, dude, if I Hell, was, go steal it. Just dude, get the fuck off my, men. hey, get off my lawn. Yeah, trick, trick, trick. Yeah, get yeah. the other part. If I, and I'm not just saying this about men. If I'll, I, if I'll, get, out, I'll turn into Gran Torino so fucking fast on these kids. Dude, if I found out my 16 year old daughter, 15, whatever the fuck, 14, whatever, whatever it is, was knocking on strangers yeah, houses. Yeah, I wasn't doing that at 16. And like, yeah, no, I'd be like, first of all. First of all, by 16, your kid is getting a borderline slutty outfit from Spirit Halloween. It's not going to look good on yeah, her, whatever. but she's going to wear it to some concert. She goes to the concert with her friends. I went to concerts when I was 16 and it was Halloween. You think I was going and knocking on doors for candy? No. By 16, I was, you know. Yeah, I was going to shows. I was going to punk shows. By 16, I was weight conscious. <laughs> weight conscious. <laughs> I was 16, I was like, I'll take the dried mangoes. By 16, yeah, I was like, do you have any smart sweets? <laughs> do, you have, I, 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 do you have the sugar-free allulose red vines? I would just get fucked up. I remember one time I came home drunk. It was the only time I ever came home drunk. Just once. And I remember, just once. Well, I was always very smart about it. My dad saw me in so many different lights. I remember one time I got wasted at a New Year's party. Yeah. And I woke up and I couldn't, I vomited all over my shirt the night before. And I woke up and I had no shirt. I was in my underpants and everyone had drawn on me. Oh, God. And I had to do a walk of shame into my front. My dad was always up at like fucking 7 a.m. making peanut butter toast. And he was walking. Like, he'd make peanut butter toast with the biggest glob of peanut butter on it. You could smell the peanut butter from the other side of the house. It was like his biggest glob of peanut butter on it. And he would sit there and watch Fox News. Oh, and I remember God. I walk in there. I walk in there and I, I was shirtless from mm -hmm. the waist up. Of course, and I uh, I probably just reeked of like cigarettes and booze, and I was I had a big mustache and a big swash to go. My friends fucking drew on my head and fucking all this and a black eye and, and you know all this stuff. And like uh, I get over, I get home, and uh, my dad like he just looked at me. And he just looked away. Uh -huh. <laughs> I remember my dad caught me smoking, and uh, I remember my dad. He looked at me. He went, John, what are you fucking stupid? And I went. What do you mean? He goes, they're fucking menthols, and then he just. <laughs> 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 and then there's. I'm trying to Are think you going to get your time. dad on here, by the way? Oh, we could, yeah, but it's just we record too late. He's three hours ahead of us. But the uh, well, the uh, well, we're gonna get him on here. We're working around, early. but he uh, he uh, you would he'd be the best. He would replace me as a co-host. Oh, he, oh, he's so charismatic. It's crazy. Okay, he's so good at speaking. But your, day, um, your days are numbered. Joe. My days are numbered. But uh, there was another time my parents. I came home drunk one night, and uh, you know. I came home drunk and they were like, I was like, I was like doing squats out front trying to like level myself out. And I just remember going in there and they were just laughing their fucking asses off at me. Really? They were like, you fucking idiot. They were really cool. They always let me do like. They let you get away with murder. They knew I wasn't doing, I wasn't up to like, they knew I wasn't criminal. Yeah. They knew I wasn't doing anything stupid. They knew I wasn't like fucking, uh being retarded they knew yeah. i was just being a normal teenager and they got it and mm -hmm. like uh yeah that was always fun but yeah what did, what did you do did your what mom you, ever what, get pissed at you um my mom no i mean i i i kind of i knew how to work the system you know what i mean like yeah, you're I, tricky. I i'm real like i i come on yeah. you know what i'm saying like i i could charm anybody all right I yeah would you would have been a great cia asset thank you <laughs> that's so nice <laughs> Um, it's never too late, Ida. They would never pay my rate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you think I'm going to take uh, government stipend money? No, no, no. Dude, I want if, that if this, shell this money, bitch. be frothing at the mouth at the idea of your ability to, like, fucking, like, swoon Saudi nationals. I'd be a new age Matahari for sure. Mm -hmm. What do you think of El Prado? Thoughts? Who? El Prado the bar. The, oh, in LA? Yeah. Never been there. All right. Um, Were well, you going to work there? No. If I did, I wouldn't talk about it here, but no, no I'm not going to work there. Um, I do have an interview in the morning, so we shall see how that goes. But You'll do great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, guys. Well, I'm itching to tell my story on the Patreon that I can't really say on here because I had a celeb run in at this house party in Bel Air that was like had insane amounts of security out front that took fucking... We stayed there for all of like it was Phil 10 Spectre. minutes and then we left. It was not Phil Spector. <laughs> I'd be dead. Um, but I'm here to tell the tale. And then there were, uh, you know, a bunch of people around me that were doing drugs I had never heard of. 
And now I'm aware of all these drugs. What drugs? I'm going to tell on the Patreon because uh. I don't want to talk about illicit drug usage on here. God knows how, uh, you know, the internet doesn't, uh, it frowns upon that. Drugs suck. Don't do drugs. I agree. It's all a bunch of bullshit. Just, Just smoke a little idiots. weed. Fucking, you know, take it easy. Don't even do weed. It turns you into Michael Rappaport. That's not true, John. Mm-hmm. Fucking spit your mouth out. What spit is it? Spit my mouth uh, out? Wash you, your mouth it's out. It's all the weed. All the, yeah, very good weed head. <laughs> it's already taken a hold of your 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 fucking spinal column. <laughs> yeah. The weed's slowly creeping up your fucking nervous system. It's gonna hit the your Abdullah oblongata and you're gonna shut down. As my a my, being. what did you call it? Is it Abdullah Abdul- oblongata? Why is it? Why is he a terrorist? <laughs> <laughs> What's the part of your brain that make is in Ab- part in the part amygdala? Tr- amyg- What's the part? No, you said uh, Kareem Abdul Jafar. Kareem Abdul Jafar isn't the Abdullah Obligata? No, that's not. Come on, you've literally said this before, and I was so I was I was flabbergasted that you really thought that was what it was called. It's amazing. That's like when J- John Travolta called Idina oh, Menzel. No, it's the Medulla Oblig. It's the Medulla Obligata. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's the the Medulla Obligata, or simply the medulla, is a long stem-like oh. structure which makes up the lower part of the brain stem. Fuck you! It's the head of ISIS. Kiss my fucking ass. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's also that it's also the person that Israel's hired to negotiate the hostage He's situation. Top, and God, top Hamas recruiter. Yeah. Uh, a, a, what is it? Just, get, just contact the Taliban. We're getting enough money. Just tell them to negotiate. Yeah, get off our fucking. Be ass. like, if you still want your forty million, get the two hundred guys out of there. They'll hop too. What are you going to do, man? Yeah. All right, guys, I have to tell this story because it's pretty crazy. Join us on the Patreon. Also, uh, Kate, give us like a rating on youtube and spotify and uh the the apple do that please i've yeah. never asked anyone to do that hey i never ask anything of you join the patreon and give us a, like a like a rating or a thumbs up yeah. or some shit you know if you're like a cool decent person yeah. if you're not a complete scumbag okay if yeah. you're not an anti-semitic terrorist supporter but whatever whatever people are throwing around whatever accusations they're hurling around if you're not one of those yeah help the show support the show Okay, uh, we love you very much. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to be out of town, so I don't know when this is going to come out, but uh, it'll come out when it comes out. Good night. night. Good luck. Oh, and happy Halloween. Yeah, happy Halloween. All Hallows Eve. Ooh. Ooh.